Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out Microsoft Windows on ARM Dev Kit 2023. So let's get started. Now to begin, this video is not sponsored. I did end up buying this from Microsoft itself and it retails for $599 and you can still get it right now. So I'll leave a link down in the description below to the link for this device. So this is the first ARM PC that I've ever played with on this channel. Now we do a lot of ARM devices like Raspberry Pi, CADOS board, uh, a bunch of rock chips, but this is officially like a desktop device. Now Microsoft named this as a dev kit because you actually should be using this to develop applications for ARM64, ARM32 for Microsoft, but it does have the power of a desktop. It doesn't have any GPIOs or anything that you could interface with. Now, as far as the build of this, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, it's got some weight to it. It's got aluminum on the bottom and the top inside. It's using recycled plastic and feels just like one of those mini PCs. Now in the front of this case, uh, it's actually very clean. There's only one LED to tell you if it's powered on or powered off. And then off to the side, you have three buttons. One for power, the one right next to it is for booting into UEFI, and the one after that is to boot into USB. Now next to that, there's two USB connectors. You can use those actually also for display. So you can actually have three display out on this device. Now in the back, there are three USB 3s, a display port, a gigabit ethernet uh, RJ45, and then a barrel connector, which is similar to a HP barrel connector. Now, as far as the power goes, it does come with its own power connector and it does 15 volts at six amps, which equals to 90 watts. Now I did disassemble this and you can see from the inside, it does have an actual thermal pad for the SSD. And it seems like you can replace the SSD to a normal size one, but there's just no way to kind of hook it up. Even though there's like a little screw slot there, it's not meant for 2280 SSDs. Now it is active cool, so it does have a big fan on here. Uh, relatively, I don't hear the fan at all, so it works pretty well. And there seem to be some connectors that you would normally find on mobile devices up in the front of the board, but they are not connected to anything. It's just opened. Now what we have running on the Windows on ARM dev kit is a Snapdragon, which is eight cores clocked at three gigahertz. The GPU is also uh, the same name. It's Qualcomm Snapdragon with 256 megabytes of RAM for the GPU. Uh, this version has 32 gigabytes installed running at 2100 megahertz and has a 512 NVMe SSD. Now, before I show you the dead stop and everything, here are my quick thoughts about this. Now, I've been using this for the past couple of days. I only just received it and I was able to enable remote desktop because it is running Windows 11 Pro. And that's what I've been using kind of like my main PC for the past two days. Ultimately, if you didn't tell me that this was an ARM device, I would have guessed this feels almost similar to an i5 8th generation. It's kind of fast, but it's not all the way up there. The GPU feels almost like an Intel integrated GPU, so it's not super fast on the graphics, but it's not really meant for that. So ultimately, if I was to say this is almost like a glorified mini PC or a thin client, but I did not use this for its intended purpose so far, which is development. I will be using this for later for development, but it's gonna require a little bit more time. So I'm gonna be using this for the next month and just give you a deep dive into what I feel should be changed or what shouldn't be changed or how I feel about this board when I'm developing in this platform. So far, I did run into a few issues, uh, software related issues, and I did have a hard time running certain applications. So it's not quite polished yet to the point where I could use this day to day. All right, so here we are on the desktop booted into Windows 11 and I am running into this little issue. The good thing it popped up, like this CR log transport, this is after I installed Adobe applications. Anything that I installed from Adobe, it runs for the first time and then it kicks with this error and I can't seem to figure it out. It told me to uninstall, reinstall, I've done all that and I can't even run Photoshop anymore and this error keeps kicking up. So that's one of the problems that I am running into and this is just for Photoshop. I'm gonna pop over into Task Manager and you guys can see this is the new Task Manager and we could go over to CPU. It is running a Snapdragon Compute Platform, three gigahertz is the base speed, eight cores, basically that is it. Uh, running into memory, we are running 32 gigs of RAM on a single slot with 2100 megahertz of speed. And we got our SSD, which uh, running a Kiox, I don't know what this is. I've never heard of this brand, but yeah, it's running this. We got our ethernet, which is a gigabit ethernet port. It uses the Surface X port, like the same thing. Then we have our GPU, which is the Qualcomm Arduino, Andrino, 
8CX Gen 3, and we are running Microsoft Windows uh, 22H 11 Pro. Now, as far as like normal desktop functions on this, it runs really good. Just opening the browser, going into say youtube.com, Nova Spirit Tech, everything loads really quick, faster than like any onboard that I've played around with. I can go into videos, pop into my, say, latest videos. I'm gonna lower the volume this on is this. A real B &H and everything store. works. Steph Mandis came to B &H to take her photography to the I could let me skip this ad. And welcome back to the channel. And today, and I am gonna mute easy. this, but I'm gonna show you Geeks for Nerd, Stats for Nerds. Zero dream, uh, drop frames. I'm gonna change the setting and then go over to 1080. Still no issues, I could go full screen. Still zero issues, zero drop frames. It runs really well, especially if you're running desktop stuff. Videos work really well. So just comparing to this, you could run Netflix, Disney Plus, a bunch of other stuff. Um, I do have Big Buck Bunny in downloaded. So you could see that if I was to run 1080, 60 frames per second using their video player, it's really smooth. All right. And I could also run 4K 60. It runs extremely smooth. I could, uh, I know this is not a 4K screen, but still runs extremely smooth. Full screen. Now I'm gonna show you some benchmarks over here as far as the SSD. Uh, it is similar to a standard SSD speed, so it's like 2400 megahertz read, and I think like 13, uh, I don't have it memorized, but yeah, here's the write. So it feels just like a standard Gen 3 uh, SSD. I was able to run Geekbench, and the Geekbench scores are pretty good. They're not great, but they're not bad at all. A thousand something for uh, single core and 5,000 something for multi-core, which is not too bad at all. Again, we finally have something that we could use and install Windows on ARM for. I did run Heavenly Benchmark for the GPU, and it seemed to do pretty well. 20 something frames per second, and uh, the score is about 700, which is decent. Now, I did manage to install some games. Will it run Crisis? That's the question. And Absolutely, it does. It actually runs it really well. Now, I'm gonna jump onto Crisis Session right here, and I'm gonna flash forward into a loaded uh, area. This is running x86, and it's loading pretty fast. It's eight cores, so it does feel like a standard desktop. Like I said earlier, if I didn't know any better, I wouldn't even think this is ARM CPU. Here we go, we just jumped into a game, and it runs extremely, extremely smooth. So what I'm gonna do is use Windows key G, and let's pop into here. And there you go. We're doing about 50 frames per second, if you can see on the bottom left. I'm gonna run around and you can see. And as far as the wattage goes, playing this game and doing benchmarks, I see it peak around 18 watts, which is not bad at all for a computer that's trying to run Crisis or any graphic card. But you can see, look, the water is good. I could zoom in shoot some stuff, change my weapons. It's it's pretty cool. Like this is truly a pretty good ARM CPU or ARM computer, being able to run Windows and some games. Now, I did run some newer modern games, which since Crisis is from what, 2007 or 2008, it is a really dated game. And obviously a lot of older computers can run this game. So what I ended up doing was trying to run um, Tomb Raider. And here we go. This is Tomb Raider running at 60 FPS in the main menu. Uh, well, not the main menu, but now the main menu. I'm gonna continue my game because I did have some progress saved. But here we go. This is Tomb Raider running at almost 55, 60 frames per second. Look at this. 55, 60. It's so smooth. I mean, it's not the highest quality possible. If I was to go into graphic options, you could probably see it's still on standard uh, effects, normal, normal, normal. But still, I'm playing Tomb Raider on an ARM PC at 60 frames. 
I'm gonna get out of this. Now I did try to run DaVinci Resolve on this. Uh, it did run into problems because it wouldn't detect the graphic card. So that's a no-go, you can't even work on that. And then as far as Adobe products, the only thing I was able to install was Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom. And it did work at one time, but now it's just choking up and it stopped working. Now, there are a lot of applications that are pre-installed. So like say Word or Excel, they do have the ARM version of this. And let me get out of this menu. Um, it does work perfectly fine as far as like workhorse goes like if you need to like write documents or do desktop work this does work very well one of the other things that i was testing was ubuntu wsl the yeah wsl windows subsystem for linux and i am able to run ubuntu on this it did take some finagling to get it to work but yeah linux does work for this pretty well actually after you get everything working so let me do neo fetch and there we have it, Ubuntu 22, 15.5. And it's running uh, this GPU, Microsoft device, Microsoft standard, ARC. But yeah, if I was to run an update, it works just like normal. So you kind of do have Linux on here if you need to, um, just by running WSL. And it does, like I said, uh, if you f f follow the errors as you're installing it, you'll eventually figure out what's wrong and it comes to this conclusion that you're able to get it to work. But you did have to enable HyperX, you have to in uh, enable Linux, you have to enable some other features, and then you could uh, do the installation itself. Otherwise, that is it for running the desktop. So my final thoughts about this, I don't feel that it's worth $599. They should have really just knocked down either the core count or maybe knock down the RAM count to lower the price to maybe somewhere 299 or 399, then it, I think it's worth buying an ARM device right now. For a 599 device, it doesn't feel like it's worth 599. It's just really expensive for what it's delivering. Again, if you need some sort of box that is for a dev environment because you are planning to develop apps for ARM64, this is probably the only route you can go right now because it has all the drivers and everything and it's supported by Microsoft. But ultimately at the end, I think 599 is a little bit too pricey just for this type of device to play around with. Now, as far as running desktop applications that are x86 or x64, it still has to emulate that layer. So it's not gonna be native, native speeds. So on certain applications, you definitely feel the lag or the slowness of that emulation. So honestly, if I'm gonna use this as a dev device to make applications, yeah, I get it. You would have to buy something like this because it's the only thing on the market. But ultimately, I would still just go for a mini PC, maybe at a lower price point that will still be faster than this. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. I will be making a second follow-up video after I use this for a month or two and develop an app or two just to see how it works. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.